So I had to think about this and I don't, I don't like this, this whole thing over here, which is um, just a bit of a, a bit of a mess. And I can't get my zoom to work. Yeah, just this whole thing here. Uh, it just, it's all yucky and it's very, it just ugh, the whole thing about having all these different scripts, it's very messy. So what I want to do is, I want to, I want to actually write this down so that we can get what we're going to do today. So what I want is, I want to have uh, a map. So um, each level will have a map file associated with it. A controller will read the map file um and generate the baddies accordingly um and then once a map file has been played out the game controller will signal the next wave. Once all maps in the list have been exhausted, uh, speed up the game, start with the first map. Okay, so that's the kind of bullet point of the things that we're going to be doing to Day, or at least the things we're going to be doing in this video. So each level will have a map file associated with it. A controller will read the map file and generate the baddies accordingly. Once a map file has been played out, the game controller will signal the next wave. And the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, this thing over here, as uh, as nice as it is to have all this kind of stuff, it, this, this random object generator doesn't know about this random object generator and so on. And that's what's leading to the sort of problems I was I was having in my in my head about this because when we play the game, uh, we end up with just random objects being sort of put on the the, the game board, and while that's uh, that might be okay for kind of you know laziness, uh, you really want it so that uh, you. Um, so that we know the, the the sort of prescriptive part of it, so or at least we we can sort of uh, figure these things out. So I'm not making any sense there, but it'll all it'll all become hurtling back to uh, I don't know what I'm talking about now. Okay, uh, moving swiftly along. Oh no, I don't want to call that resource. I want to call that resources. So inside here, we are going to create our map files and our map files. I'm just going to reveal this in Finder. Uh, so inside our resources, uh, I'm going to create uh, a new text file inside here, and that is going to have the map in there. Now I'm going to do it in a very specific way. So each one of these, um, each one of these, I mean we could import it from a CSV file, but that's a much later video. Uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five um, columns that we can put this in. So every time we we play it, it's going to be like the the sort of pianola in, in um, uh, uh, Game of not Game of Thrones, <laughs> Westworld. I knew it was an HBO show, Silicon Valley, um, and it's going to play it from the bottom to the top. So the first one is going to be. Uh, the the first item that gets gets created. So the first item that gets created is going to be one zero 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 because that's I I just want to create an object. Now we could make that an A for alien. We can make a B for whatever it is. But as far as the the game's concerned, it's just spawn an object at this point here, and, and that's all it is. Um, and so the next one, not surprisingly, is going to be that. And then it's going to be that, and then it's going to be that. So I might fast forward this bit of the video, um, because it doesn't really. Um, I mean, it, 
you know, we could um, uh, look at this a bit more scientifically, but uh, this is this is kind of good enough. So the whole point of this is that you're going to be um, trying to rescue as many planes as possible um, in in one uh, sort of sitting, I guess. But you only have three planes to do it. So um, we've got, um, let's make that one, one, zero, zero, zero. Um, one, zero, one, zero, zero. Uh, I'm just making this up. I just want to have like 10 uh, for the first one here. So that's going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, something like that. Okay. So that's going to be our first map. And our first map I'm going to store inside uh, Unity. And then we have, um, what the heck is this called again? This is called... Uh, I can't remember if it is. This is YouTube source. Okay, so that's not anywhere near there. It's inside repositories, YouTube source, Unity, and then Space Rescue, Space Rescue, and then we've got assets, resources. What a pain. Uh, and then we're going to call this level one. Okay, level one.txt. That's good enough. So uh, back inside Unity, we now have level one.txt. So you need to read this in. And then generate those, uh, generate the the uh, um, the objects coming down there uh, one at a time. So uh, <clears throat> our random generators we can get rid of, but we'll get rid of that in, in just a sec. Um, what it is going to need, um, we're going to need to create a script here that, that reads in the game board. Okay, so we're going to have to create a script. So I'm going to create a script here, and it's going to be called, um, let's call it Pianola. 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 Pretty sure it's called a Pianola. Let's drink to the girl with the red shoes, or blue shoes, or white shoes, or whatever. I don't know. I can't remember. Pianola. Let's have a look and look. <laughs> let's dangerously look that up. Player piano knows a self-playing piano. I was right. There you go. See, player piano, pianola. One of these things. You've seen them before. You know, they got a little thing in there, and they play themselves, or you can play the piano yourself. Pianola. Um, a little bit of history there for you. Um, all right. So I need to have public uh, text asset, and then this is going to be the map files. So I'm going to add my tooltip. the list of files that contain the maps, contains the maps. Um, and then we need to have public float speed. Uh, and the speed is going to be in seconds for updates. So this is going to update every second. So every second, one new thing gets spawned at the top, and then we move those those values down the the, the, the ranking. So I think in the the random I'm flicking around here, but I think the random generator it starts that, but it doesn't. Uh, oh yeah, okay, right. We need to um, we need to handle this as well. So the random item generator it generates the item, and then it uh, keeps it moving down the board, so we need to to move down the board as we, as we go along. So we need to do that. Um, and also, um, one more thing as well is um, we need to add a couple of things to here as well. So uh, if the piano uh, roll runs out, before the ships have been rescued, play it again. So we need to loop around that, that roll there. Um, okay, so that's the speed there. So tool, tip, 
the movement speed in seconds of the and then this will be the um what do you call it i don't know aliens baddies they're really baddies debris let's call it debris um okay so um now do i want to do it when you start i guess you do want to do it when you start because when the level starts uh we really want to kick it off uh or do we actually let's have a public uh is running equals false so let's let's not have it on uh set this to true to run the debris falling okay and then um, I want to do void uh, update and I also want to have a void start as well um, so the current map file so the current map file is going to get the the list of, of uh, lines inside the map file so I'm gonna have a private uh, string and then this is going to be map data so this is the current list of map data so if actually maybe we don't need start actually let's get rid of start just now so if map data equals null what i want to do is i want to load that data in and i want to to um, read the the contents of it so i will also need uh, the current level as well so i need public int current map index equals zero because it's going to be the first item inside that list so i've got tool tip um the current map index Uh, so now I'm going to read in the contents of the text assets and then strip that out into there. So I'm going to say map data. Uh, can I do this in a one hour? I think I can. Map data equals, and then it's going to be map files, current map index dot text dot split uh, da -da -da -da, dot to char array comma and then string split options dot uh, remove blank entries now that's all in one line but i'm going to split it into two so i'm going to get rid of all of this for a start and i need to add system as well so i'm going to split that into there and i'm going to move this is that not going to let me do that it's not Okay, I can't put that in there. Sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, using system. Okay. Uh, so that's going to give us all our map data. And our map data we run from the, the bottom to the top. Um, so um, we're going to have to emit. Oh, we have to emit those values. Uh, and then keep them going as they go down the screen. So, uh, all right. So the first thing is we basically have nothing in the bottom rows there. Um, let me think here. Let me go back to this file here. Okay. So I'm gonna make a copy of this. All right, so this is going to be our our first uh, row. So that's going to be the first row that gets emitted on the screen, and then we're then going to be pointing to this row, which means that this one is now going to be the second row on screen. This is going to be the first row on screen after one second, and then so on up the ranks. So we need to move those objects down the screen, and then once they get to the end. We then add them 
to the end. So what we want to do is we want to add those items to a queue. And the queue, what will the queue have? I think the queue should probably have, uh, without trying to make this overly complicated, I think the queue should have uh, either a true or a false inside inside here for, for each of these values. Um, I'm trying to make this as easy as I can. Okay, so what I think I want to do is, I actually want to, to, to reuse the random object generators. Um, you're kind of staring me in the face here. So uh, I have this random object generator and it's doing the right thing. It's just the fact that it's, it's just picking a random um, a random value. So if I take this code and then I rewrite it, then I should be able to um, get it to do what I want it to, to do, um, uh, which is I'm going to emit it on this row. So basically this pianola is going to act as my random number generator uh, and my random object generator is going to do the, the right thing and move the, the object down there. So I'm going to uh, maybe, uh, maybe not, uh, maybe not have it as a random object generator. Maybe I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this class, but I'm, I'm going to keep it just now, if that makes sense. So I'm going to create a new model behavior there, and I'm going to call this pianola column, and uh, it doesn't need it to be a. Um, Yeah, let's make it a, let's make it a, um, let's make it a mono behavior. So I'm going to bring that in there, and that is private. Uh, and then the row, uh, okay, so the row um, is always zero. So that's, I don't need to worry about that. Problem is though that this only deals with one object. So what I actually want to do is I I want to to make this an actual object. So this is going to be pianola object because I'm going to have multiple objects um, on this mono behavior. Um, that are going to be controlled separately. Is this going to work? Um, I think it should work. I think it should work. So I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call it pianola object. And pianola object is we're not going to have a speed. We are going to have a column though. Um, and it is going to have a start. Now the start time. Uh, is not going to be needed and the column is going to be fine so set value um, set, game board, set value column at row so row is going to be it's always going to be zero um, but then I'm adding one there okay so that is so row is always going to be zero at the start so I can get rid of this I don't need that um, and then, uh, speed minus, well, um, I don't need speed, what is this thing here, so if game controllers reach bottom, uh, break out of there, and then if that's the case, what I want to do is destroy this. Um, so I want to break and I don't want to change any speeds here and let me just tidy this up um, if row is not equal to 5 game board set uh, false okay um, 
I think that's okay. And then okay, I'm gonna say um, uh, private bool destroy destroy me. And destroy me is gonna be false most of the time, but it's gonna be true if we break. And the reason why it's true if we break is because what I wanted to do is I want to destroy um, this is going to be uh, this dot destroy can I do that um, object why is this not let me do this oh because it's doing this mono bit so Visual Studio 2017 is doing this weird thing or uh, Visual whatever this is I don't know what this is. What is this? 2017 for Mac. It does this thing where uh, it doesn't uh, like certain things. So I don't. I want to remove this component. Actually, can I do remove component? Will that let me do that? Uh, remove game object dot remove game object dot remove component. Uh, yeah, it's just destroy, I think. Yeah, destroy. Uh, so I want to destroy this. So I want to say if destroy me, destroy this. I know that sounds kind of super weird, but that's just the, the way that these things happen to be. Uh, okay, so the Pianola object is there. So every time I create, a, every time I have an object, I want to uh, spit out a Pianola object. Uh, every time I have a, a one, I want to spit out a pianola object for that particular column. So maybe I'm going to have a factory in here. I think this might be a good idea. So I want to maybe have... Um, I don't want to create an instance. Uh, actually, let me create another. let me create another script here. So I want to say... Um, I'm going to call it a new mono behavior, but it's not going to be a mono behavior. Uh, it is going to be a sealed class because I don't want anyone touching it. And it's going to be uh, actually it's going to be a static class, static class, and it's going to be called uh, object factory. Or actually, it will be pianola object factory. And I'm going to rename that. So there. All right. And now I'm going to say public static. Uh, and then do I want to pass back the game object? Uh, no, because I'm just adding it to that component. So I want to say, um, actually, you know what? Um, let's make this an extension. Um, Pianola extensions. Um, actually, no, let's make it explicit. Public static, and then I want to say, uh, create, uh, no, I want to have Pianola object, uh, create, game object, game object, and then it's going to have the column associated with it. And then I'm going to say, um, go dot add component uh, object equals add component and then the component is going to be pianola object. I have to work blind sometimes which kind of is annoying but never mind obj dot column equals column return object. So that returns the pianola object, which we may or may not want to keep a hold of. It doesn't really, I don't think it really matters. Uh, okay, and then pianola itself, what we're going to do is every time we update, we want to grab the first line and then move on to, um, so we need to know the current line. So the current line, uh, oops, private int 
print line equals negative one because we don't have anything set to that. So the current line is gonna be um, current line equals map data dot length minus one because that's gonna be the the length of it. So if I go back to here, it's gonna be this is our first row here. So it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's gonna be the ninth um, row inside our list there. Um, and do we need that in an update? Um, what we can see is if not is running, return. So if we're not running, don't show anything up there. So we don't wanna start spawning things. So if we pause the game or whatever, then then this will block us out and we don't do any updates. Um, so I want to do this every, I want to emit this every one second. So maybe what I want to do is I want to have this as the start. So an I enumerable. And then I want to say while true. And is running yield return null. So if we're run, running, then just don't do anything. And then uh, I want to say um, yield return new wait for seconds. And then I want to do, I don't know what's going upstairs. Um, speed. So I'm waiting for that number of seconds. And then after those number of seconds, I'm going to grab the current line. So I'm going to say uh, string line equals uh, map data dot um, current line. Yeah. And that gets our current line. And then um, I'm going to go through all the characters in that in that line, which is starting from here and going to here. <sighs> Annoyingly, because everything's backwards. <laughs> uh, I haven't made this so easy for myself. I've done the exact opposite of, of doing these things. Uh, I'm now going to have to um, uh, rework where the, the current index is inside the array, inside the, the for loop, because it's going to um, be on the left hand side and I want it to be on the right hand side. I want it to be zero to whatever the length minus one is, but it's going to be length minus one to, I don't know what's going on upstairs. Anyway. Um, okay. So for int i equals zero, i less than line dot length, i plus, oops, i plus plus. Um, and then I want to say uh, int column is going to be line dot length minus one. Um, oh dear. Maybe I should just use the, the mouse for this. Minus one. And that's going to be minus one as well. Um, so if we have um, if we have something of length number five, that's going to be four. So it's going to be zero to four. Oh, and then that's going to be minus line dot length. What am I doing here? No, minus i. What am I doing? Oh, okay. Columns that right. And then I want to say if uh, line. So if the character at position i is equal to one, I want to do my uh, where is it? PNO object factory dot create. Is that not a static method? Did I make that static? I did. Public static PNO create. Why is this doing this?
Oh yeah, we need to work that one out as well. Uh, create, and then we're going to pass in this game object, and then the column, which is going to be our column. Um, I don't know why that is. If you know what object factor does not create, create. Yes, it does. There it is there. Let's recompile and see why it's not working. Because speed doesn't exist. Okay, that makes sense. So I'm going to have to have public float speed. So speed is going to have to be in there as well. So now I have to pass in speed. And so we're going to do object.speed equals speed. And I go back to pianola, and then I pass in speed. So that's going to move everything down. What? What's he complaining about? Why? Oh, that's why. Pianola object. Okay. Now what? Okay, I think we're good. Um, so PL is going to be there, create is going to be there, it still doesn't like that. Yes, it does. Um, is it because of that? No. I don't know why it doesn't like it. It's just being silly. Um, okay, and then our PL object is going to. Um, Wait for seconds, and then it's going to do the, the right thing and move on to the, the next value. And then our object factory is going to do the same thing as well. So uh, the only thing we have to do inside here now is uh, we need to subtract values from the current line. So we're going to say current line equals uh, minus minus. And then if current line is less than zero, uh, current line equals and then it's going to be map data dot length uh, zero. Uh, zero? What am I doing? Length minus one. Okay. Uh, and so we're going to get those those uh, values repeated. So now what we can do is we can get rid of those those random uh, generated objects there. So let's go back through and see what we've missed. Do a recap here. Uh, so our, this is not going really to update, this is going to be a start. So it's currently false, we're going to default to false. Uh, and then you return, uh, what's it complaining about here? Oh, because, no, that's okay. Method never reaches end or return statement. Uh, well, yeah, it will. Um, it's complaining because this is always false. So if map data is uh, null, then that's going to be there, and then um, so we need to have a method to change the map, but that's okay. We can we can do that in just a sec. Um, so. Actually, let's take that out just now. So I will take that out of here. And I'll put it here. Now, I have method in my madness. And my ma method in the madness says this is going to pause. So this is not going to work for X number of seconds. So if we change the map data in here, this is then going to be invalid. And then we're going to end up with problems. So that's why I moved that to there. And we're splitting by, I'm on a Mac just now, so slash n should work, but slash r slash n gives us the best of both worlds if we're on PC, so. Uh, that's okay, and because I have two solutions on. Uh, anyway, uh, so there's the current line from there, and I go through each of those values, and I add those values there, that's that done. Um, 
the random object generator I just need to know the game board and the game controller okay so I need to pass that over to my pianola as well and I need to pass that to uh, this here as well so I need to pass in game board game controller okay so I need to pass that into my pianola object as well uh, where's my factory? And object dot game board equals game board. Object dot game controller equals game controller. Board um, game controller. Okay. Yeah, I apologize for this not coming up. I'll, I'll close it in just a sec once this, this, this compiles uh, and I'll reopen it. And yeah, that's that's all there needs to be in there. All right, so we can get rid of all these random generator -y things. So I'm going to remove these components. And then I'm going to add Pianola. So I just need to add this one pianola uh, script. I'm going to add my uh, my level resource. Um, that's fine. The game controller is this one here, and then the game board is this one here. There we go. And I'll save the scene. And I think that's everything. I think we can. Do, I think we can just run this, and it'll it'll work. Um, well, we're not getting anything, and it didn't crash, so that's a good first step. Uh, but I think the reason why it's not running is because if I go to the random generator, you see that is running is not true. So as soon as I click this, we should start to see values falling down here. Maybe. Or not. Um, okay, let me, uh, let me close Visual Studio. And we'll fire it back up again. And we'll debug it. Because clearly something is not quite working. So, Pianola. For those of you screaming at me, I know every single time. <laughs> enumerator, not innumerable, enumerator. I I don't know what to say. It's it's been a very long month. Uh, all right. Well, at least that's sorted. Uh, all right. So now we play this. And uh, the first thing I noticed is that it just starts running even though I didn't tell it to run, which is not good. So if it's not running, yield return null. Otherwise, 
I want it to do something else. So uh, this needs to be inside here. And then this needs to be inside another else statement um, here. Uh, so that'll stop that. Um, I think that's it. Uh, the other thing I noticed was um, the columns, I think, are actually set up correctly. So I just need to do I uh, instead of this. Um, I don't think we need to do any crazy arithmetic stuff there. Um, and now, because I want this to be the zeroth column and then that to be the um, fourth column, zero, one, two, three, four. So now, uh, running this, it's not running just now. So that gives you the the, the, the player a breather uh, between the levels, at least that's the idea. So then we click on it is running, and then we start to see things falling down the sky now. Okay. All right. So we need to sort, there's a couple of issues with the, the falling debris there. Um, this looks a bit busy, but other than that, I think that looks okay. Um, yeah, okay. All right. Um, Okay, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to split this into two videos. Um, I'm going to leave this here. Uh, I think we've done done enough. Um, but uh, thank you again uh, for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is part of the Video A Day in September 2017 videos. Uh, if you liked it or you didn't like it, hit the appropriate button below. Uh, subscribe, so if you hit the, the little icon over there, then you'll get notified, uh, especially when you hit the little alarm icon. That's the really important part, apparently. Uh, then you'll get notified when a new video goes up. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.